students here i am with the second lecture of science i hope you all are maintaining the guidelines of social distancing and staying at home safely in the previous lecture we got an introduction about nutrition and its types today we will discuss about nutrition in green plants students in class 6 we studied that green plants are called producers that is they can make their own food they can prepare food in presence of sunlight this is possible due to a process called photosynthesis let us define photosynthesis the process by which green plants use sun's energy to convert water and carbon dioxide into carbohydrate glucose only green plants and some photosynthetic bacteria can convert sunlight into chemical energy food the picture shows a green plant it obtains light energy from the sun carbon dioxide from the atmosphere water from the soil and chlorophyll is present in its leaves the green pigment chlorophyll is present in its leaves which helps to trap the sunlight and this converts carbon dioxide and water into glucose and oxygen oxygen is a by product in this reaction glucose gets converted to starch and is stored in fruits roots stem etc now let us discuss the requirements for photosynthesis first let us see the word equation carbon dioxide plus water in presence of sunlight and chlorophyll produce glucose and oxygen the requirements for photosynthesis first and foremost requirement is chlorophyll it's a green pigment found in the leaves this helps in trapping the sunlight sunlight converts water and carbon dioxide into glucose water plants absorb water from roots and root hair root hair are thin structures found on the roots which help in absorbing water and minerals this water and minerals are transported to the leaves through special tissues called xylem and carbon dioxide is taken in from the atmosphere now the question arises how carbon dioxide enters the leaves the leaves have small pores called stomata present in the epidermal cell that is in the outer surface of the leaves here in the picture you can see the stomata this is a single stomata here in this you can see the cells of the plant and in that you have stomata the openings small pores the stomata they can close and open this is an open stomata with the guard cell the guard cell uh, when it shrinks it closes the stomata in this you can see the structure of the stomata here is the stomatal pore that is the hole through which carbon dioxide enters and oxygen goes out these are the epidermal cells of the leaves these green colored and these two kidney shaped cells they are called the guard cells they help in opening and closing the stomata and these are subsidiary cells 
the stomata as i said can open and close as per the requirement allowing the carbon dioxide to enter and oxygen to leave during photosynthesis stomata also help plant to release excess of water that is the process called transpiration occurs with the help of stomata water and food need to be transported in the plants this is done by conducting tissues the two conducting tissues present in the plants are xylem and phloem xylem transports water from roots through stem to the leaves phloem transports the food produced in the leaves to the storage organs the glucose gets converted to starch and it is stored both glucose and uh, starch are carbohydrates glucose is a simple carbohydrate whereas starch is a complex carbohydrate formed by joining of the glucose molecules lastly let us see why photosynthesis is so important photosynthesis helps green plants to prepare their food not only for themselves these plants serve as food for animals also herbivores they directly use plants as food some plants indirectly depend on plants for food like the carnivores this also releases oxygen which is a very important gas photosynthesis uses carbon dioxide so the level of carbon dioxide reduces so these are the important uh, functions which photosynthesis does for us now try to answer the questions based on the first two lectures given in this sheet stop